Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be once again featuring the Asashio, the tier 8 IGN uh, upcoming IGN DD Premium, still a work in progress and all that. And uh, this is the version 2, where they basically they nerfed the concealment on the torps from 0 0.7 kilometers to, drumroll, 0 0.9. So they are essentially still completely undodgeable for any battleship. Not really much of a change. They did however buff the guns, buff the reload on them. So you actually have significantly more gun power. Well, it's still not like that impressive, but you do have significantly more. Which means you can do things like push into caps and contest slightly better than you could before. Or just spot for your team. The problem of course is... The good players will do what I'm doing now, which is push the caps, contest, CDDs, shoot them and so forth. It's a set 23, so I'm a bit hesitant. I, I, want, I want to keep him spotted as long as possible to get damage on him, but there's two DDs and there's a Montana back there, so I am going to be smoking up soon. I don't dare to actually sit in the smoke though, because of course it is a set 23, which means it does have Hydro. If it does decide to pop Hydro and turn my way, we have no one actually spotting him, so staying in the smoke is a risk, not to mention potential incoming torps. But this kind of fighting in the capture zones, and basically taking the fight to the enemy DDs, the good players, the very very good DD players, they will do this. They will use all the strengths of the Asashio um, to help their team, they will scout, they will contest, they will fight. Even though they are at a disadvantage, because the Asashio gun power doesn't really compete with the gun power of the other DDs, and more importantly, it can be torped in smokes, and the torps still can only hit battleships. So in any sort of knife fight against other DDs, the other DDs will always have a significant advantage in multiple ways over the Asashio. The only Asashio advantage really being um, the concealment. So your average player will of course not be doing this. Your average player, why would he keep pushing into these gunfights, these horrible situations, uh, picking these kinds of fights? He won't. He will avoid it. It's understandable. You don't want to. You don't want to be fighting Fletchers and stuff when you can't even torp them. You can't outgun them. Nothing. So, the average player is not going to be doing anything what I'm doing now. They're going to be sitting back and they're going to be spamming torps all day, and that's going to become a problem. That's going to become a real issue because. Uh, it promotes more passive gameplay. We, we've had 20 km torps in the game before. We had it. Shimakaze used to have 20 km torps. Now, these torps, by the way, it might look like uh, they're gonna miss based on what, where the Montana was going. It looked like he was good. The white line, predictive line, was actually showing way past that island. But if you watch my previous commentary where I mentioned that you should not blindly trust the white predictive line, my point here is that I will most likely land a torp because my first volley looked really good. And that will force, first of all, the Montana will probably slow down to try to dodge them, and he will have to repair the flooding, the flooding slows down the ship as well, so there will be multiple things that will be slowing this ship down slightly. So he will most likely continue on his old course after he's done, but that slowdown will buy my torpedoes plenty of valuable time to actually cross the dense distance and catch him. So that's of course another one of the huge advantages of having Torp re Reload Booster. If it looks like your Torps are going to land a hit, you can just pop your cooldown and you got a new set of torpedoes on demand and you can send that out and you can secure yourself a permanent flooding, as I'm doing to this Montana. I'm landing three Torps in total and that already is a ton of damage, but more importantly that's permanent flooding. Permanent flooding meaning he doesn't have his damage con ready, so the flooding will tick until he dies. And having that kind of power available to you at any time means that any sort of battleship trying to push anywhere close to an Azashio just has huge potential of being absolutely wrecked. And there's not really much he can do about it, because even if he angles nose in towards my torpedoes, I only need to land one. And when I land one, I pop my torpedo cooldown, and I land another. Ta-da! Permanent flooding, he will die. So, if there ever was a DD that straight up stopped any sort of pushing battleship, any sort of BB aggression, stopped it completely in its tracks, it's this one. What's worse is, of course, that because these torps are 20 km range, and personally I don't think you even need 20 km range, I can run torpedo reload booster on it. Oh, sorry, torpedo uh, acceleration on it, and I've been running it quite a lot. You still have an amazing 16 km torpedo range, which is the same as Gearings, which is the tier 10 longest range. Well, we don't talk about Shimakaze because the 20 km torps are so garbage, but 
you have this these 16 kilometer tropes that do 72 knots and it's so terrifying and it's so potent at just crushing any sort of aggression and the montana got too close now the turpitz is playing his hand at playing a bit more aggressive i get look once again the white line shows way behind the island the ognevoy pops up as well so i know i've been spotted so once again i drop torps not where the white line would have predicted but i expect the turpitz Considering the way he's angled, he's probably going to turn in hard towards me. Because if you see a DD, you certainly don't want to be grounding into the island. And turning away with the angle he was was unlikely, so I knew he was going to turn towards me. So my predictive torps are actually looking really good. Because, well, he did exactly what you kind of want to do in a battleship. Now, normally being angled nose in against torpedoes gives you a fairly good chance of dodging. But because these torps are so fast, 72 knots with torpedo acceleration, and because the concealment is so good, he doesn't have time to do anything and eats two torpedoes on the nose. Once again, that's a forced uh, repair from him, because he was flooding. And now he has no damage con, and he's gonna start being HG spam. By me, my, by me included, because, well, Dasashi doesn't actually trade anything for getting uh, torpedo reload, he just gets it for free. So you have a smoke as well. So when you do land these torps, if your torpedo reload is on cooldown, or you simply don't want to use your torpedo reload, as I am doing right now, then you can just smoke up and set the target on fire instead, which is just as disgustingly powerful. Especially now that they've improved the gunpowder on the ship, it makes it even more brutal against any sort of aggression. So, my problem with this ship was that, <laughs> well, it, it, the problem was that it just has it's just too strong at stopping any sort of battleship aggression. And the average player will not be playing as aggressively as I will. I mean, we've seen what the average player did when we had 20 km torps on the Shimakaze. Some of you guys might not have been around, but there was a time when the Shimakaze 20 km torps were pretty much the standard pick because they, did, they had much better torpedo concealment than they do today. Today they are garbage because they are spotted from so, so far away, but back in the day that was not the case. Torpedo reload, of course. I launch bullet torps as he's coming in towards me. It turns out he's turning out, so I pop torpedo reload booster and I get a second chance. And this ability to just throw out 16 of these basically tier 10 massively hard hitting deep water torps is just so insanely powerful. Anyway, there was a time when Shimokaze 20 km torps were the norm. Everyone used uh, 20 km torps. And it was horrible. Because the Shimas would all sit pretty much in the back line. None of them wanted to scout, none of them wanted to push any caps, none of them wanted to do anything except sit very far back and farm damage. And amusingly that led to the Shimakaze not actually having that good of a win rate because, well, the, cap the USDDs would push the caps and they'd get the caps and you would actually win the games because you held the cap control. But the Shimakazes would just sit back and farm damage and in return the battleships would sit back because they didn't want to push into that. And you had this horrible, horrible passive situation with multiple Shimas sitting back and spamming your battleships back and forth and no one really wanting to leave spawn at all. And that's the kind of gameplay that the Asasho is kind of bringing back. And I don't think there's anyone who's actually missed it, except for those guys who liked sitting at 20 km range in their Shima and spamming torps all day, thinking they were actually being good players, when in fact it was horribly boring for pretty much everyone else on the server. And this is what we're now potentially seeing return, and I think it's horrible. The change, I mean... Um, I did talk to one of the devs and I said the problem with having a ship that is this specialized at one thing and one thing alone. If you balance a ship, if you balance the torpedoes around only being able to hit battleships and carriers, um, well, carriers are not really a realistic target because they will most likely be undetected or just so far away. So most of the time you, you're only able to torp one target, which is battleships. If you try to balance a DD around only being able to hit battleships, then those torpedoes have to be absurdly strong to compensate. You can't have the same torps as everyone else, as everyone else can hit both um, either cruisers and battleships or DDs cruisers and battleships. You can't have the same. They have to be stronger because you can only shoot them at one single target. So you have to give them these super powered or powered torpedoes in order to balance it. But then <laughs> playing battleship against this thing, playing battleship against these super overpowered torpedoes is horrible. 
it's not fun at all. It's horribly unfun because you can't really counter it in any way at all. You, they can be launched from so far away that you that your positioning isn't nearly as valuable as it, you would, it would normally be. And you can't really use your friendly teammate's position the same way either because, well, you think, oh, yeah, I have a DD there. There's no way the, the enemy DD might be there. But the enemy DD might be 10 kilometer behind that position and launching torps from there. So the situation is just straight up horrible. The Ogneboy pushes in. I'm going to try to see if I can kill him. I have to smoke up, though, because I slow down to dodge the torpedoes. Sadly, no hits here. I'm going for dual purpose torps here, might hit the Amagi on the left, might hit the Amagi on the right, and it just, every single battleship, you, you notice the trend, the, tar the target I have been choosing this game, the targets that I have been killing one by one by one this game, has not been the base camping, sniping battleships. Why would I? They are very hard to hit, they are very hard to reach. No, the guys I've been killing have been the guys that have been trying to push the objective. The guys that have been trying to be aggressive. The first target I killed was the Montana, who tried to support his DDs and tried to shoot at us DDs inside B. He got within, what, 15 kilometers of me? So I launched double sets of torps on him and I got him killed. The second one was the Turpets, who tried to push in and tried to get some aggression done. I launched preemptive torps when he turned in, he ate them as well, and he got killed when he had no damage gun available. And now one by one we're picking off this. I landed a torpedo by the way, so I popped my torpedo reload, because I know he's used his damage gun. So this is of course another chance of getting a permanent flooding on this battleship. So the argument that um, finally we have a tool against all those base camping sniping battleships, that argument is just broken to begin with. Because this doesn't fix sniping camping battleships. This doesn't improve the situation. This doesn't even punish the camping sniping battleships. Now, what this ship does extremely well is punish any battleship who attempts to push in. And you note that every time I've been killing someone, it's because he's been pushing in towards me. And that's because that's the best target. That is the best target for you. I shoot him as I'm going behind the island, get a permanent fire, since I know he doesn't have a repair. So even if the torps don't land, my fire would do a significant amount of damage, but I still land a torpedo on him, and the flooding does kill him off. Pick a fight with the Shimakaze, since I do actually have the gunpowder to take this fight. He has a health advantage, but I have a key quite nearby who's probably quite eager to shoot him as well. Important to note is that I broke his engine, and I broke his engine again. Which tells me that in between those two volleys, he actually used his damage gun, which means he does not have his damage gun. So I instantly react to this and I turn around and I start chasing him, because I now know that he can no longer outrun me, because he has a broken engine, which means he cannot actually break spotting distance from me if I choose to chase him down. But I've, I chose this game in particular because it shows so very well that the battleships that will suffer the absolute most from the release of the Asasha, the battleships that will get punished the absolute hardest from the release of the Asasha, is the battleships that actually try to play the objective, the battleships that try to push in, the battleship that actually try to be useful. The ones that sit back and snipe, and and as far back and farm, like for example this Alsash, who's still been alive and who's sailed like through A or something, um, he survived the longest. So he's the one who actually gets the least punished by the presence of this Asashi ship. And this kind of goes against many of the arguments when I posted my original Asashi commentary on the, on the previous version, um, that this Asashi somehow helps deal with camping battleships, or finally I get to punish camping battleships, I love this ship, this is so cool, I finally get to get revenge on all those campers, because that's it's not really the campers that are suffering, it's everyone else. Everyone who tries to push in, everyone who tries to be useful. So, of course, if this ship is released as it is, people will learn that if I try to push in against this Asashio, I will eat torpedoes, I will get punished, I will probably eat multiple torpedoes because of torpedo reload booster, and that's simply horribly unfun, and I don't want any part of it, so I'm gonna camp just like the rest of the battleships. And that's exactly the opposite of what we want. I'm trying to get some fires on him, once again, since I've forced his damage con. I'm kiting away at this range, Dalsash isn't very accurate, it's got horrible dispersion, but of course, as I say that, that guy gets god tier, fortunate dispersion and nails me with multiple shots. I did make sure to turn full broadside to him as he shot though to minimize the chances of eating full penetrations and instead trying to ensure that the, the shells just overpen me and simply don't delete me. Not that it really matters because we have all three capture points, it's a two versus two, 
But the Alsage, well, he ran away. The Ogna boy, who I crippled earlier, well, throughout the entire game, has also fled. And there's not really much they can do about the game ticking over in our favor. This game ends. And if we look at the score, 243,000 damage. Uh, 1 million credits. I did complete the French the new French campaign mission. 14 torpedo hits, 3 kills, 12 floodings, and I did get a cap. But the average player will probably not even be getting many of the caps because we have seen this in the past. We know exactly what people do when you give them massive long-range powerful torpedoes. And let me tell you, the answer is not they will be actively scouting and pushing. I can tell you that right now. Team score-wise, 3.2k base XP. It was a tier 10 game, so of course doubling the score of the second place, especially when everyone else is like tier 9, tier 10. Well, not everyone else, but the majority is very, very satisfying. Detail report-wise, um, main guns did about 32k plus so a bit of fire, not really too much. Ultimately, maybe 35k gun damage. The main brunt of the damage, of course, still comes from the torpedoes, because that's your bread and butter in the ship, and they are so stupidly, incredibly powerful. The Montana, even though he only ate four torpedoes, still ate 90k damage, because I made sure to get a permanent flooding on him. I still think this ship is a terrible idea. I still think this is a horrible addition to the game, and I really hope they don't put this ship in its current state into the game, because there is absolutely nothing positive that can come from this ship being added. There, there are no positive, uh, there, there are no upsides. Um, the Asasha will be fun to play. Uh, playing the Asasha will be hilarious. You'll sit there and you'll get these uh, long-range torpedo hits. I, I play a lot of Asasha, as I've been testing it, because I think it's a lot of fun to play. The problem is, of course, it's not fun for anyone else. It's only fun for the guy playing the Asasha, and that's why it's a horrible addition to the game. Anyway, um, I won't bother showing the build, I'm just using my Shimakaza build, except with RPF Torpedo Reload and... Well, I use Torpedo Reload normally. Um, I'm using Torpedo Acceleration instead of Survivability Expert. Because you don't need to survive, you don't need health, because you're generally not fighting other ones, uh, other DDs too much. Uh, you just want to be torping all the time. So might as well put all your perks into being as good at it as possible. And of course RPFs just so you can avoid any DDs trying to scout you or trying to pick a fight with you. Because well, they're trying to do their job but you don't want anything to do with them. And because you have so much range you can just kite them all the way back to your friendly ships. And if they try to chase you they will get killed. Fun times for everyone. Anyway, that was my Asasha commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it.